oh, well, we're stuck. <laughs> we didn't make it. <laughs> yeah. Are you recording, guys? Yes, I am. I'm recording now. <laughs> so, we are. Um, this is the second time I have had the pleasure to speak to the most amazing Dr. Christian Northrop and the first time that Bryce have. Um, when Bryce and I were coming up for this idea for our show, um, Dr. Christian, for Discover Your Passion series, you were virtually top of the list. Well, you were top of the list because you embody everything that's passionate and giving back. And most of our listeners will know exactly who you are. But if I can, I just want to read out your bio to get us started because it's so lovely, your bio. It's so lovely and diverse. So excuse me whilst I read this, folks, but I do not want to miss any out. Okay, great. So Dr. Christiane Northrop is a visionary pioneer in women's health, a board certified OBGYN with more than 30 years of clinical experience, former assistant clinical professor of OBGYN at the University of Vermont College of Medicine, and three times New York bestselling author of Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom, The Wisdom of Menopause, and Goddesses Never Age. In 2013, Regis Digest named Dr. Northrop one of the 100 most trusted people in America. In 2016, she was named one of Oprah Winfrey's Super Soul 100, a group of leaders who are using their voices and talent to awaken humanity. I'm getting goosebumps. And in 2020 and 2021, she was included in the Watkins Spiritual 100, a list of people that make a unique and spiritual contribution on a global scale. Internationally known for her empowering approach, Dr. Northrop embraces medicine that acknowledges the unity of mind, body, emotions and spirit and teaches women to create health by tuning in to their inner wisdom. After decades spent transforming women's understanding of their sacred bodies and processes, Dr. Northrop now teaches women to thrive at every stage of life. As a business owner, physician, former surgeon, mother, writer, speaker, and according to Miriam Ava, PhD, a rebel rock star and an authority on what can go right with the female body, Dr. Northrop acknowledges our individual and collective capacity for growth, freedom, joy, and balance. Dr. Northrop has also hosted eight highly successful public television specials, and her work has been featured on The Oprah Winfrey Show, The Today Show, NBC Nightly News, The View, Rachel Ray, Good Morning America, 2020, and The Dr. Oz Show, among many others. Since March 2020, Dr. Northrop has worked on the front lines of medical freedom, which her colleague Kevin Jenkins, CEO of Urban Global Health, refers to as the civil rights movement of the 21st century. That is so impressive. How does it make you feel? I know you know you, but when you hear that, how do you feel? I, I actually feel like um, it's hard to believe. I mean, it's hard to believe all that stuff that I did. And, you know, I have um, books everywhere in my house, but it feels like we're in such a new time. Uh, we're at um, Daniel Giammario, the founder of uh, Shamanic Astrology, said this is the turning of the ages. Mm -hmm. And I always knew that the Pluto return of the United States would be a big deal. But none of us could have predicted this big deal. None of us. But it's interesting that you, when I think about what my passions were, um, then what I would say to people, what I would like everybody to pay attention to is what moves you to tears? Mm -hmm. What moves you to tears? And when you hear about something, um, the thing that moves you to tears is where your passion is. It's literally where it is or, or the thing that makes you... Uh, swoon. You know, so for me, that was um, in, I don't know, 2005, I think it is. Um, I wanted to learn partner dancing and we and my sister and brother-in-law and I were looking through the window on a January night of main ballroom dance, big picture window, like out of a movie. And I saw a couple go by dancing Argentine tango. And I said, oh, that's it. That's it. Now, I haven't danced since March of 2020, because 
God had another mission for me uh, that has been, let me just, let me just say, actually even, even more fun because the people I'm meeting, like the two of you, this is soul family. This is soul family. You don't have to, there's not one bit of who I am that I need to hide with people like you. And then I realized that for the vast majority of my life, I have been having to uh, squelch a part of me. I'll give you an example. Um, and this was funny. So I'm um, doing a broadcast uh, out at a Clay Clark event with a, uh, a Christian ministry. And uh, they've got the shofar horn in the front there. And I've, this is my third podcast with them. <laughs> but then a woman runs after me like an hour after this thing. And it was at a church. She runs after me and she goes, you know, there's a, a pack of tarot cards was left. They were somewhere near your purse. Those aren't yours, are they? I go, yeah, those, those are mine. She goes, well, I think they threw them away, you know, the devil and everything. She said, so you don't want them, do you? And I go, yeah, I do. <laughs> and, it, you know, then I'm talking to a group uh, down in Sarasota, Florida, and I'm talking about, you know, using my pendulum. And she goes, well, that's how the devil comes through. And I said, oh, no, oh, no, no. That's how the devil makes sure that you don't have access to the tools that will help you access your inner guidance. And do you know that the devil, <laughs> thank you, the devil um, knows scripture way better than you do. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Isn't that, that, that was the moment because I, you know, I'm sort of the master at being who you need me to be. And in my practice, I had to do that. If I had Jehovah's Witnesses or if I had macrobiotic people or I had fundamentalist Christians, you, you need to help with where they are, mm. in, you know, because then you can help them access their healing. You know, so if Jehovah is the one, we're going to go with Jehovah. Mm. Um, but in this time where we are right now, there is no room for fundamentalism. There's no room for fundamentalist anything. So what I say is Jesus works through my pendulum and Jesus works through my mother piece tarot deck, which is actually the only one I know how to read. And I do, I keep this little, you know, travel pack. I had to get a new set. Where was I going after that? Sedona, Sedona, Arizona, where I run into a woman, you know, outside a restaurant who channels Jesus. And I thought that's pretty much how it goes. <laughs> So, and I've always known in, in medicine, um, you meet the body is biosymbolic. Everything that happens in the body is symbolic. And gynecology, which I'm board certified in, is money, sex, and power. It is just how you use money, sex, and power. The, the second chakra, where your genital organs are, that's where we wear our weapons, our wallets, our guns, our knives. And what we are here to do right now more than ever is move that second chakra weaponry energy up into the heart, up into the heart. And that's, of course, what is being so beautifully displayed in Ottawa right now, where these truckers who generally are lone wolves. I mean, if you're doing long distance trucking all the time, you're good at being alone. And now they're, you know, they're hugging each other and they're praying together and it's absolutely amazing. We're at this, we are at this turning point right now that is astounding. And we also have been in a, in a kind of a, a birth canal since March of 2020. I don't know how you feel, but I'm a, I'm a very different person in that I'm no longer afraid of any elected official. I'm no longer afraid of any doctor with all kinds of, you know, I was always trying to like be acceptable to the male authority figures like the, the gray haired surgeons. I just um, did a thing with Robert Malone in Sarasota and he's the inventor of the MRNA technology. But here is a man who developed malignant hypertension after getting the shot. And uh, so can you imagine what that's like where you have been a, at the top of your game molecular biologist MD, 
and you've been involved in inventing something that has not been used for the highest possible purpose. And uh, what's happening now in the data sphere is they're removing, you know, it's the ministry of truth, right? They're removing him from the roles of science even. And if you, if you look at my Wikipedia profile, so you read my bio, right? But if you were the average normie and you just looked me up on Wikipedia, you would, you would sort of see up is down, down is up. By the way, I made the Watkins Spiritual 100 list for uh, 2022. We got the word of that, and I was shocked. I thought, wow, they didn't cancel me this year. Isn't that amazing? So I, what I want people to know is that we are, just like when you go through labor and you have a baby, you're forever changed. You are forever changed. You will never be the same. And I remember it so well. I looked down at my newborn daughter and suddenly I cared about the world in a new way. Uh, it was um, shocking to me. It, right at the same time that I also felt like I had ruined my life. Both things were true at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but life is long, generally. And the passions that you had before you were a mother and before that, when you're about age 11, let's say, before the hormonal veil fell, those passions come back. Only now, after menopause, you generally have the, the skills to be accountable and really get a first chakra under those skills. So that's exciting. That's why I, you know, I just brought my harp in here because I thought, well, we just do a little, you know, this was my passion when I was three. I'd never even seen a harp. This is a little one. I have a big gold one, but this is a little one. did was I hadn't touched it for years when I had little kids and they were, uh, you know, two and four and there was too much peanut butter on the sounding board. And I just, it's just too hard when you have little kids to do anything other than make meals, clean up meals, go to the hospital, do surgery, do, you know, all of that stuff. But then I was able to um, go back to something that was there in the very beginning, because I told my parents by the age of three that I always wanted to play the harp and I had never even seen one. So wow. that's, we need to pay attention to those things because that's the kernel of our, our soul script, just like an astrologic chart is a blueprint for our soul's journey. And you're given a script and how you play it is up to you. But you're given a script. I just had a Vedic astrology reading done with Joni Petrie, which I'd never had done before. That's predictive. And I'm old enough so that she could go back and we could go way, way back. And she'd say, okay, well, this probably happened here and this happened there. And it was, yep, it sure did. <laughs> yep. yeah. I have my Vedic chart done. I spent, before this all happened, I spent a good portion of my year in India and I had my chart done by one of my uh, professors over there, my philosophy professors. And it's very predictive. I mean, he told me when certain things were going to happen, sure enough, down to the date, they happened. Yeah, it, it's amazing. But of course how you play it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that needs to become uh, your passion, as it were, which is, okay, this just happened. What am I going to do with that? How am I going to bring more uh, of my divinity, more of God into, into this thing that just happened? And, and I think especially, um, well, with women, the beauty of being a woman is that you get about, I don't know, 370 opportunities to look at how you're doing your script. And that's called, if you don't do it right, it's called PMS. And then if you really don't do it right, then it's, you know, it's um, perimenopausal hell where you keep getting opportunities to upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Um, in this culture at age 50, that's like a cultural portal, age 50. Like, oh, you're now 50. All right. So you need your colonoscopy and you need your screenings and you need your mammograms and, and you need all of this stuff. And 
you know, yeah, that may be true for the average person, that, but I don't want anyone to be average. Mm -hmm. Like I, this way, I don't want anyone to ever tell me their age after 33. I'm good till 33. After 33, the age symbolically that Christ died. And if you go to heaven, nobody is over age 33. Um, I get that from the people who've died and come back. So after 33, I would just don't get into it. Just don't get into it because cultural portals, age 65, by 65, you should be retired, which means you're now useless or now you're um, put out to pasture. You know, the average policeman in New York City after retirement, and I think it's early there, like 52, 53, they're dead in three years oh because God. they no longer feel useful. Mm. And, and so you gotta, you've got to kind of catch yourself um, because we're taught to say things like, at my age, it's too late to. I remember my brother calling me as I was going through a divorce and a part of me at that time had said, well, you know, I put in like 24 years. Um, just, you know, why not keep it going? Except that I knew I would get bilateral inflammatory breast cancer and be dead if I stayed in that marriage. Because here's, this is important. What you say you believe and how you live your life, if those don't match, this is this delta is the degree to which you get sick and the degree to which you get a hammer on your over your head. Mm -hmm. And I was not living in a partnership relationship. I was living with a self-centered person with narcissistic tendencies. And I knew exactly how to keep him happy because I've learned that with my mother. And, and, and But you see, that's now what you can do with that information is you can say, oh, my mother was a terrible person and my husband was, and none of that is true. They served me as the actors in the script that I created before I was born so that I could grow in areas that I would never, ever have grown without Absolutely. them. I went through the same thing. I was engaged to somebody with narcissistic personality disorder and it ended awfully, but I always tell people that it um, going through the healing process and trauma therapy and working through that was one of the best gifts I was ever given. And I don't regret that at all because it changed me. It became like, yeah, a and, now, and now you probably can see those people coming a mile away. Oh yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I couldn't before that was that, you know, those were the ones that love looks like that, right? Yeah. Until it doesn't. Um, and you would never, you would never have that experience. The average person, by the way, um, doesn't get it about energy vampires. They don't get it, which is why they miss what's going on on the planet, because they absolutely cannot fathom that their doctor, their government, um, their husband, their wife, their legislator, they cannot believe that these people would do anything to harm you. They can't believe it. And our disbelief, our um, denial of what they're doing is the protection that the uh, psychopaths actually, you know, we had, okay, narcissistic personality disorder, but a psychopath, which is by the way, one in a hundred people, um, they don't have any conscience whatsoever. And uh, it's taken even psychology a long time to come to grips with that. I worked with George Simon who wrote In Sheep's Clothing, and he helped me do a course on energy vampires. And he said, uh, there's this belief that only hurt people hurt people. So only the people who've been hurt in childhood, they're the only ones who hurt people. And that's a lie. That's a lie. He said, you got to think of it as a, a cat with a mouse. If you've ever seen a cat with a mouse, and certainly Catherine, you have, and I certainly have, mm. they get all excited and it's kind of horrifying because the cat is like, oh, you know, and the mouse is dragging its guts across the floor. Maybe it has a broken back by mm -hmm. now. And the cat is more and more excited. That's a psychopath. They, they literally do not care what you think. In fact, your pain, your anger, your anguish is food for them. 
And uh, so they're, in a way, they're not human like, uh, like we are. And many, many people have so much trouble believing that. And right now we've got, of course, many examples of that going on on the planet. And I, what I actually believe, and you can tell me what you think, this is um, a lesser species that has been feeding on humanity for hundreds of years, thousands of years. And now the portal is being closed for these people as humanity rises into uh, the fifth dimension and the portals closed for these people and it's hands off the earth. They'll never be allowed back in, but we've been uh, slaves to them for centuries. And now we're at the end. There's a thing called project looking glass. And I don't know if you've studied that where they say, nothing can stop what's coming. Yeah. They'll throw out, God knows what they'll throw out And now, you know, some kind of a false thing about a war or whatever. Um, but I think it's all at this point orchestrated so people can, can wake up. But what I know from um, all of my years in, in medicine and uh, conception, gestation, labor, birth, those are the physical equivalents of how spirit comes into matter. And when we understand that, then we rebirth over and over and over, but each time you go up a higher level on the spiral. And so right now, those of us who've chosen to be here right now are a hardy group. I don't care who you are, or what you believe, man, this is a hardy group. And a lot of people are leaving because they don't want to be here for what's next. But I do, I have a feeling about the ones, like, for instance, I was flying home from Florida and a woman came up to me. This has never happened. She came up to me in the gate and she looks right at me. We're both masked, of course. She says, you're horrible. And then the next leg of the flight, because she was, of course, there the whole time, she goes by my seat and goes, you have blood on your hands. Well, I think that someone like that, um, when she gets across the portal into the other side, she's probably going to go, oh, my God, I really, I got it wrong. Let me get back there as soon as I can. But you know what the, the Buddhists say, that the chance to be in a human body is the, the equivalent of one, the chance, one hair on an oxen versus all the hairs on an oxen. So let's not waste the time to be on this gangster planet where you can do more um, spiritual growth, right? In your lifetime, then, you know, I guess they're lined up, you know, I get the sense that they're, they're sort of lined up. When do I get a chance to go there? And then of course you get here, you forget and you go, Oh my God, I didn't ask to be born. And the key is, yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah you did. I'm going to have to use gangster planet. I just think that's the best. That's got to be a t-shirt. Like I'm from the gangster. Right, planet. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is our next T-shirt. Both Bryce and I have got a really good friend um, called Liz who does brilliant T-shirts. And I would have worn my, in honour of you, born for a time like this, but it's a sweatshirt and I've had the fire going all day and I'll be sweating. But yeah, Gangster Planet is so true. And we've talked a lot, haven't we, Bryce, about the portals and about the portals yeah. closing. So 100% with you on that one. And how exciting is that? And how oh. amazing are human beings? Like, I know that I've heard, though, that what's so miraculous, the fact that you're even in a body right now. And I think humans just forget that. Like, you're every you're everybody watching. Like, you're a miracle. Your yeah. life is on purpose. You're not a mistake. Yeah, I like, um, you know, what Alex Collier says is that we're, we're uh, genetic royalty. Like, we are uh, 22 different types of DNA, which is why everyone wants the human, but think about it. I mean, you got to laugh, really. We've been subjected to all these stories that have been completely misinterpreted. Like, you know, we were um, ejected from the Garden of Eden because of some woman's sexuality. I mean, yeah, you know, so therefore we're, you know, beaten down and beaten down. What happened to me though, which was such a godsend is my mother was uh, accused of painting the Blessed Mother's toenails on the altar in 1935. And she didn't do it. And she, but she was different from the other girls. So the priest made her kneel in front of the altar with her arms outstretched, you know, 30 minutes a day till she would confess. And she didn't do it. And she was working her way through girls Catholic school. 
And finally, the priest comes to my mother's home and says to my grandmother, you know, Edna won't confess. And my grandmother did not throw her under the bus. Eighth grade education, my grandmother said, hey, if Edna said she didn't do it, she didn't do it. And then the priest started to tell her she was going to be excommunicated and all that. And she just looked at him and she said, if this is religion, I don't want any part of it. And so I was spared any kind of fundamentalist indoctrination. And my mother's spidey senses for fundamentalist indoctrination were so finely tuned as a result of that, uh, that she never threw us under the bus for anything, whether that be, um, uh, you know, medical stuff or religious stuff. I once had a piano teacher, I was 11 and she stops me in the middle of a piece and she points to, <laughs> points to a painting that she had on the wall of the rapture, you know, where like people are coming out of their cars, looking like angels and, you know, all of that. And she goes, are you ready? It's like, ready for what? And I guess ready, you know, are you ready to be the rapture? I, I tell my mother in the car at the way home, she goes, you're never coming back here again. <laughs> Good. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I've dealt so. with them. I'm going through all the missing books of the Bible. Oh, so yeah. I've gotten literal. Um, I don't know if we can say this word, but uh, D-E-A-T-H threats from fundamentalists. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, called that a witch. Is... Called all sorts well, of things. Just for yeah, reading. Clay the Clark the was. Bible. Yeah. Clay was told not to have me at any more reawakening um, uh, things because I was a witch. Uh, like, okay. I mean, see, because they don't, they actually don't know what to do with me. My credentials are so solid with exactly. all of the best places in the world. And how do you go from being, a, you know, one of Reader's Digest's most trusted people in America to being one of the 12 people uh, held responsible for 70% of the misinformation on the internet. Now that's getting close to home because yesterday, New Hampshire just passed a law that physicians could prescribe off-label drugs. Well, guess what, people? We've been doing that forever, yeah. forever. That's part of being a doctor. Well, now New Hampshire just passed a law that you could prescribe off-label drugs. But in my state of Maine, three of my physician friends are losing their licenses for prescribing off-label drugs. The ones that we all know yeah. Yeah, they're prescribing. Um, now I'm about to go and give a big lecture on Friday to a whole bunch of uh, politicians. And, uh, you know, I'm going to point that out. So, oh, right. So literally uh, 50 miles from here, you can do this, but here you're telling these doctors, they got to pay for a, $5,200 neuropsych test to determine whether they're fit to be doctors because they're prescribing something off label. Oh my God. I mean, it's getting fun. You got to admit. I mean, it's and, and if, we can, if we can take, so what do you do with those uh, DEA TH threats? What, what do you um, do with at first they upset me, but now not so much. I did have a really scary one though. That was made by a person on YouTube yeah, um, who said that he was contracted. If I'm paraphrasing, he was contracted by Jesus Christ to decapitate witches and then proceeded to call me a witch and said he was coming to Atlanta, Georgia. That scared me that, that, okay. that really, because other than that, people don't know where, I mean, Atlanta's city of 6 million people. You're not going to find me. But that was that really unnerved me. I can that I one. can see why. I also know from Dr. Kerry Made, the medical stuff that's gone on in Georgia mm -hmm. will make your hair stand on end. I mm -hmm. mean, the devil went down to Georgia is real. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I know that's all real. So what I tell people is delve into that as much as your central nervous system can stand it. Some people can do more than others. The way I see it, like way in March of 2020, I watched Out of Shadows Official mm. and I watched Fall of the Cabal mm. and I said, oh, OK, I get what's going on. And then it's just been watching the scales fall from people's eyes, but being shocked, actually shocked by 
the number of colleagues I've had, even you know, past presidents of the American Holistic Medical Association, functional medicine doctors, going along with the narrative, people who never gave um, jibber jabbers to their kids for anything. Mm-hmm. Now, all of a sudden, they're mass and they're, uh, this has been astounding for all of us, I think, to yeah. watch people who were who are your people. My publishers of my stuff don't want to be associated with me. I mean, that's after making these pub- publishers millions, exactly. millions of dollars. Yeah. But you know what? It's going to end. Mm. It's going to end. I listened to Cliff High saying, you know, what we needed to do and on his latest woo, whatever, saying that um, when this ends, which won't be that far in the future, we're, we're at the end here now. Yeah. He said, we'll have to be very compassionate and, you know, but there is, and I think we need to acknowledge this. There's a part of me that wants people down on their knees in front of me. <laughs> We've had this conversation, Dr. Christian, we have, and it's like, you know, but we are allowed to be human at times as well, aren't we? And, and, and we've all three of us have got quite a good sense of humor, but as you say, when it's those professional um, people, I mean, Bryce has had this situation with her yoga community. I oh, yeah, the yoga, of course. Of natural healers. And I cannot tell you the tiny percentage of natural healers of all sorts of modalities and natural therapists who've gone along with it all. Yeah. And, they, and they've got a healing sanctuary and they're making you comply with all the stuff to go in. And it's just been absolutely brilliant to really see where everyone is really at. Yeah, it has. And then it, it just shows you, what do they call it in the Bible? The remnant. I mean, there's like, the, there's just, there's not a lot of us. No. When I go around, uh, you know, to the, the freedom things and all, first of all, let me just say, everyone is like us. I mean, there's, Everyone's got a great sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Everyone is uh, enjoying themselves in, when we're all together in a way that I swear to you was never there before. Doctors' yeah. meetings. I mean, that wasn't that much fun. Now, if you're on this side, you're, you're really in the celebration of what humanity can be. And we're yeah. getting strengthened. Don't you feel like you've been in the oh, crucible yeah. from iron becoming steel? Yeah. And I think we all have a greater appreciation and value for each other, you know, um, that we can see. And that's the thing about the yoga world. Like, you know, part of the practice of yoga is liberation. (laughs) So why, and and when I see like, we don't allow any of this in our, our shala, we, we just blink, you can't come in with that on. It's a breathing practice. You, if you don't feel comfortable, then you don't need to be here. That's kind of our, we got an email because I do courses now and, you know, my courses do sell out like consistently and they have for years, but the last course we started, there was an email that came in asking if we were checking for this and we just sent a one line sentence back. We don't discriminate. Oh, that's a good one. That's good. We don't discriminate. We're not mm-hmm. going to, we're, we're not going to check your medical. And I, we, you know, the CDC is here. And so we have, oh, a lot that's of right. Students. Yes. We have a lot of students who work for the CDC <laughs> and half of them don't even know why we close the world down to begin with right that's a wake-up call like these people working are like i don't know why we're closing things down like this is not what they're saying it is yeah that that's that's exactly right cdc stands for covid death cult just so you know (laughs) yes oh i so love that we've had such fun with the acronyms and things and it is quite hysterical it's amazing how many people of my long-term friends and also family members have got absolutely no idea that I'm talking about this stuff. It's yeah. absolutely hysterical. I can't wait till they find out. And the names I've been called by professionals, my biologists and scientific friends, by family members and things like this. And I go, it depends really whether I've had a glass of wine and what mood I'm in. Because I go from being, you know, uh, yeah, I can forgive to thinking, right, this is going in the diary to remember. Either, even if I have to come back as a ghost, I'll, I will remind you. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we, uh, it is, we are going to have to be really compassionate, but I might have a bit of fun with it at the same time. Well, I think so. And then the other thing that I found is that um, 
one of the things that I did starting in the winter of 2020, 2020, yeah, um, was I thought, what is the most radical thing I can do here? Because I knew what was going on was insane. (laughs) And I'd been collecting phone numbers of local people who would see me out and about. And they would say, oh, I, you know, I love your, your Facebook things that you're doing, your Instagram things that you were doing, which I'm not doing anymore, obviously. Um, that sort of ended around Valentine's Day of 2021, when all of us did, uh, um, we just did the truth. Yeah. And, uh, and everyone's Wikipedia profile was uh, completely changed at that time. But we got together in celebration like real humans together around a bonfire out back or around a potluck. And we began to, to celebrate. And I think that um, with the tech world and all of that, we had gotten away from that. Yeah. And, yeah. and now it's going to be around campfires and around uh, this sort of thing. But, you know, but I know if I met either of you, like in person at the airport, whatever, it would be like we've been friends forever. You know, that's just that's just how it feels. And, and I remember reading uh, way, way back, Barbara Marciniak's Bringers of the Dawn. And I thought, okay, that's us. And we're the systems busters. And then that guy, Danian Brinkley, saying, um, well, I think he's died four times or something. And he goes, well, I know what it is to be dead. And he says, so, you know, you spent a long time up there. And then every now and then, you, some, he says, every now and then a signal goes out and some, some son of a bitch up here needs to be dumb enough to go down there and keep the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I know. It was we were the idiots that so were like, we'll go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah. And yet one of the things that you said that I think it's been the most important things for me. I mean, so many people that we've spoken to and I I can't believe how lucky I am. I mean, who'd have thought a couple of years ago I'd be speaking to you two? I mean, it's just amazing. Um, But the thing is, it is really that deep connection because when you're connected at such a core value level, it's a different connection. It uh, bypasses, you know, people that you've known for years. And I think so many of us, we've always known that we've been a sort of square peg in a round hole. Yeah. And now yeah. it's just absolutely brilliant. So one of my family members said to me, there's no one out, and they were deadly serious. There's no one else in the whole world that thinks like you. You're just a complete dangerous nutter and you're an absolute <laughs> disgrace and everything. And I was like, well, actually, there's so many of us, and I didn't even realise how many of us and the connections when you come together. I've n- I've never felt so at home as I have the last two years since this has happened because I've connected with people that we just get each other and we've got that that drive to actually just do something positive. That's really really true. And now, do you have people in your immediate area that you get together with for tea and whatever? Only a few. There's very few of us, and it's been really, really hard. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a few. I've got a few friends, and then a few that are about an hour away, but no one in my local vicinity at that all. Is, whoa, you know what, how about you? Well, what's interesting is so living in Atlanta, you know, Georgia is a very much a red state, even though, you know, they recolored it this last competition, we'll say. But so uh, you go outside of Atlanta and it's nobody's like this. No, you know, it's pretty, you know, very, very much aware people. But the city of Atlanta itself is very liberal, although it's not as bad as like New York or Los Angeles. You, you have pockets mm-hmm. of of people not wearing, you know. Well, at our Shala, we don't allow this. We, we would lock when they locked us down. Literally two weeks, we went back and started teaching again. Like, screw this. We're going to start teaching again. (laughs) And what has happened is this, this, this plan to have these like this, you know, paperwork, all that stuff for this has kind of backfired because we are attracting, we're book solid. Our life's work classes are packed. Um, And if people don't even know like our political affiliations or anything like that, they just know we're not, we're not asking them for paperwork or doing. And the other night, the other uh, Sunday night, I was finishing up a course and I walked out to the lobby and all these people were, these students of ours were sitting in the lobby 
all realizing that they were all followers of the military back channel. Mm. (laughs) All this stuff. They started talking about the scandal that involved pizza. We'll say, and they were like realizing that this whole time they've been practicing together and they were all exactly this on the same page. So it's kind of like attracted PR. The community has grown. It's, It's just growing because people are starting to be fed up. And so they're researching And then they want to have a normal life. So they find us and we don't require all the hoopla that other studios are requiring. And so it's kind of, it's kind of magical, actually. It is, isn't it? So when you asked me about that, Dr. Christine, Mm -hmm. the what has been really obvious is all my clients that I've been working with are all completely aligned. So they might have various different invitations, but I've not lost one single client quite the opposite and I've never it's just that I have to travel sometimes because I see a lot of horses and things Uh so there's not one single client that's ever asked about this that's ever been wearing this that's not even when we were meant to be completely locked down that we were still doing it all so exactly like you said Bryce so my and that's a clientele that I've built up over 15 years and what it made me realize is without knowing how much we had in value it wasn't just a work relationship it was a life relationship oh thank god yeah I mean, thank god for that because here's the thing you know if you think about where all this sort of came from mm. it's the city of london vatican washington mm. dc so you're kind of really at ground zero with the royal family and the yes. and the crown and and all of that stuff which is you know which to me is so odd I mean, that whole thing is just mm-hmm. odd. Um, you know, I've never want, I've always wondered why are people so interested in what the royal family is doing? Well, I realize that's all um, orchestrated. Yeah. That's, that's all, um, that's a whole lot of um, uh, publicity, like paid publicity to keep that. I remember when People Magazine, about maybe two years ago, Mm -hmm. every front page was something on the royal family. And I kept thinking, why? Like, like, seriously, why? What do they have to offer? Like, we're somehow supposed to be interested, you know, in people with this much money with all the latest fashions and really, who cares? I'm I'm very interested in uh, people who have life skills like yours with the animals, you know, right at this moment, we have a healer working with one of our cats, you know, just to kind of tune in, tell us what's going on with him. Because right now at this particular time, (laughs) they've developed all these mats and it's really hard to keep them. And, you know, the communicator said to my daughter, well, you know, the, the female is picking up on your mental energy and that's why she's getting all these mats. And I think in the new, where we're going, this is just going to be common. It's just going to be common. Common. Everybody knows this. There won't be any judgment. Oh, you're doing it wrong. No, Mm -hmm. no. It's that this is, this is the next level for you to, to learn. It's, and it's great, Bryce, to have a, you know, a yoga teacher who's with the program because boy has that group Fall in the Waldorf school people and the functional medicine people and the holistic people. I've never seen anything like it. And, um, you know, I have a friend who's in the LA area and she's been going to the schools to serve them notice that uh, keeping the kids with this on is actually uh, child abuse. Yeah. And she said, there's so many parents who want this on their children because they think it's protecting them. That's that mass formation but I think for us, the passion has always been to fan the flames of human potential. Yeah. So Bryce, you do it as a yoga teacher and Catherine, you do it with the animals that of course reflect the human and Absolutely. take on the human's thing. Like right after my divorce, I had two rescue cats and they both eventually died of cancer. Mm-hmm. And I know they did that so that I wouldn't have to get cancer from the um, grief yeah. of the end of my marriage. They did it for me. And when we suddenly realize that, that's going to be the the new earth that we yeah. are, you know, in the midst of. Yeah. So yeah. exciting. It it's is. Funny. My dog is, a, we rescued him from India. I've actually brought six dogs back, street dogs back. And um, You did? 
That yeah, we have only been... have one. The rest of them live elsewhere. So, um, but Catherine's been helping him, and my little boy has a crush on Catherine. Um, <laughs> and we channeled his higher self, and he said they were in a pack together, and he's got a little crush. But I was told that he, I was actually told that he was sent to me as one of my guides, mm. and one of my, and I believe it because he's oh, very yeah. attached to me. He's very protective of me. Um, and there's there's some soul, there's a deep soul behind his eyes, you know. Oh, so. Yeah. But he is very, I, I can't have him in the room when I film with Catherine because all of a sudden he wants to clean his little boy bits right when she signs on. So and you can hear it. <laughs> so he has to go in the other room when I film with Catherine. Next best thing so. Daniel Craig, you know, if Daniel, if you're watching, let me know if I have that effect on you. <laughs> I've got four Romanians, in fact. I don't know if you can see at the back. Can you see one of my cats by the salt lamp? Yes. And there's another one here. And then there's another one under a thing. So I've got four lovely Romanians and as well as other ones from the UK. And you're so right. It's just incredible how much they reflect. And they've been my biggest gift in sorting myself out yeah. and trying to get rid of all my years of baggage. Because if not, I know that they take it. Um, so they're such a good reflection of me. In fact, today, I was just before I came on here, because I've been rushing around today for anything, and one of my horses was so annoyed with me for being so disre disrespectful of speeding up his feed time. He bit me, and he never bites me. Oh, my gosh. It was completely my fault, because I was being so disrespectful, because I was like, quick, 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 I've got to get on a call. And he was like, how rude. <laughs> Which it was. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we can learn a lot from animals actually so because animals don't i mean they would they don't care how big your house is they don't no. care how much money is in your account they don't care if your makeup's perfect or they, nope. they feel your love that's right that's right exactly what kind of horses do you have Catherine? I have got, unfortunately, I just lost one just before Christmas. So I've got one new forest pony that lived wild in the forest for the first four years of his life. So Whoa. he's absolutely amazing at, um, you know, he knows exactly how to look after himself. And then I've got a 32-year-old rescue Shetland um, who is just adorable and just like a little wise sage. And, and they're complete opposites because my little Shetland is absorbs a lot of stress and negativity, whilst Romeo, my one who lived wild, is just like, sort your crap out before you come into my space. So he's brilliant. <laughs> and then at the moment, again, we've just lost a cat, although I've just arranged to get another one over, another rescue that's joining me in a few weeks. At the moment, I'm down to four cats and three dogs and three guinea pigs. <laughs> So, and the guinea pigs are just adorable. So, but yeah, I wouldn't be without them. So we've got a few more joining our, our clan sort of, sort of coming up, which is fantastic. And two, oh, two, two legged children as well. <laughs> so, yeah. But so moving forward, because you have just had the most extraordinary journey over the last two years, because as you said, you, you're, you're in such a unique position because your people cannot get you on your CV or nope, your, your credibility so I've had to this so where are you at now and where are you being drawn to put your energy sort of moving forward well right now in our state of Maine which is a very deep state kind of a place like the Rockefellers are all over the place um, and I just found out that having a medical license in in Maine and in Oregon are like the two worst places wow. and and uh, so I've had this realization that I was put here um, because where, you know, where it's the darkest, you can kind of do the most good. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten about 24 different communities having main stands up meetings. And we're, you know, wondering whether to become a 508 C1A and get out of the public space into the private and into the common law. But the most important thing has been to bring people together from all walks of life. So on Friday, I'm doing a, uh, a lecture to the Republican Party of Kennebec County. And it's not like I think that Democrat or Republican, uh, you know, I'm not looking for them to save me. However, I want the Republicans to know that if they continue to be rhinos, there's this huge untapped group of people, medical freedom is 
the civil rights movement of this time right now. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter. About 40% now describe themselves as independent. And so I want those who are into medical freedom, regardless of what party or no party or whatever, to get together. And I learned early on from Pam Popper in the summer of 2020 uh, that uh, we need to become a one, one issue voters. And that is, do you or do you not believe that a person should have the right to determine what gets injected into their body or that of their children? Because if we don't have that, we don't have anything. Mm. It, it doesn't matter what you're spraying on your crops. It doesn't matter if they can inject you with something that you don't want. All else is lost. So I'm yeah. uniquely positioned in this because for 40 years, I have told people that um, shots are neither 100% safe or 100% effective. And my fall to grace or fall from grace, depending on your perspective, began with my testifying in front of our legislature against 72 mandated shots by the age of 18. I didn't know that that was just the prelude to what was coming, mm -hmm. which was the, you know, this other, this other thing, because what they're looking at, uh, a, a Pfizer guy talked about a shot a year for every human on the planet, which would make them more money and, and whatever. So that was always the goal. And um, so I'm very interested in letting people know this was the agenda. We speeded it up. Uh, and now they're making mistakes all over the place. And now you can't help but see it. it and so I'm going to, I'm just drawn to helping people see it, looking at the schools, being around those who are awake and want to know more and need community. We have a, we have a parallel system here called our True Health Group. And, um, you know, we do everything under the radar, like with Rolodexes and with uh, whatever. We've got a guy who will tell you how to pickle beets and how to keep root vegetables for a year in sand. And he's got another workshop coming up, how to butcher a pig and make sausage. And we have all these people now mm -hmm. who are, who know who each other is and, you know, but it isn't a Facebook group or it isn't, it isn't anything. It's like literally community. Okay. I know a person. And what I've said to our group from the beginning is I don't know how we're going to do it, but I know God is going to show up and we will do it. And as I call it the real internet. So at this point, I went from, um, you know, getting through in 2020, being smeared all over the press mm -hmm. and, you know, having the New York Times calling me regularly, we'd love to do a profile on you, like that's never going to happen. Um, you know, CNN calling me regularly, I really thought they were going to show up in my yard. Um, and so now uh, I, I feel like we're at a turning point and I've gotten things, at least in our state, a kind of all set up so that when all heaven breaks loose, we're going to have places for people to go. But I do think, I think an awful lot of people are, are going to leave. I see this already. I wish that it, we talked about this, Sherry Tenpenny and Larry Pilevsky and, you know, my doc friends, that there were going to, there's going to be a lot of death yeah. mm -hmm. and it's horrific. Mm -hmm. The stillbirth rate, the miscarriage rate. But I'm working on a, um, you know, a natural DNA dating site called O Naturel with some 30 something tech entrepreneur guys. And so we need this more than ever, because what I say to people is, well, you know, if you don't want your grandchildren to have tails, you're going to want to get in on this. And, um, you know, so I'm looking toward the future. I just see uh, things getting more and more fun. And I met a bunch of people in Sarasota and some who've had the shot, but woke up after the first one. And it's not about that, like with the truckers, right? It's not yeah. about that. It's not about that. But I'm very interested in working on protocols to help people. But the number one, the number one, you won't get anywhere unless you do that. And that is to get down on your knees and really get it that you worshiped false idols. Yeah. And once you do that, then you bring in God and God can heal anything. So I'm really kind of excited about, about that, about that whole, yeah, there's a million things you can do, but if you don't have this divine thing going, 
you got nothing. Yeah. It, you, you don't. And I think that that's what we're finding. I mean, we have a guy in Southern Maine who's been on the city council of one of our biggest, the biggest city in town. And, you know, he's been selling stickers, uh, a board of Republican defund God. And uh, he's the, he and one other, the only people who voted to keep the mask thing going in the city of Portland. And you realize how ungodly and satanic a lot of these people have have been like you know the Lucis trust and that big old statue in front of the un of the beast yeah. it's like it's it's so out there you go it's in your face really <laughs> it's in your face i've said that to people before and they'll be like oh i don't i don't believe in all that stuff i'm like it doesn't matter if you don't believe it this group does mm. and they do yeah. these things because they believe it their feet is so yeah it's so funny you talk about I've I've uh, been, was playing with my pendulum board the other night with my friend and we were just goofing around and yeah. you know um we were channeling source creator and I, I was like so source creator god how do you feel about the canonized bible because I've talked about how it's been edited and how King James changed it and got rid of the Geneva Bible and I thought he was going to say something very profound you know because it was source he went yeah. h the pendulum went to h a h I'm like, oh, this is a Hebrew word. And it went right back to A. And I was like, he said. Ha -ha. <laughs> that is hilarious. I was oh like, God. my God says hi, ha, ha, on a pendulum board. So he's got. Well, actually, <laughs> OK, I think that's the other thing is, I mean, don't you love some of the memes that are coming out? I mean, they're oh, so, the best. Ever. They're so funny. And we have to have a real irreverent sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I mean, real. There was the one I saw on uh, Jeffrey Epstein that was very funny about him and Hillary. I forget what it was, but the you know the we there's a bunch of us, right? We've been passing that stuff around. Like I get up every morning, and it's kind of like, all right, God, what's the direction today? Like, yeah. what are we going to do today? And and in a way, you know, the people who are just staying on the surface, swimming in the shallow end of the pool who don't want to acknowledge this. I just don't have that kind of time anymore. I, I, you know, I just, I only want to talk with the people who, this reminds me of way back in the day, people would always invite me to their hospital to do a grand round. So people need to know what you know, they need, our doctors need to know how to birth a baby and uh, delay cord clamping and, you know, please come. They need to hear from you. It's like, no, no, they don't. I'm not going. I, uh, Bernie Siegel told me years ago, he goes, don't go where they're angry. Just don't do it. Yeah. It was wonderful to get permission to not try to rescue anyone. Only go where you're invited, only go where you're going to be respected only go where it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. And I've met uh, pretty much everyone in this, in this movement, of, except for Dr. Jessica Rose, whose stuff I adore. Okay, imagine this wonderful Canadian statistician scientist who makes statistics and databases human, human. When she talks about the BEARS database, removing three to four children's deaths per week, and then she says, these are people whose stories will never be told. I mean, I've never, it's that wonderful bringing that feminine thing in that you don't see normally, uh, like we know the actuaries for insurance companies, as Dr. Malone said, that is an exact science. That is as an exact science as you ever find, which is the actuary in an insurance company. Those guys were unable to predict a 40% increase in death in 2021 in people age 18 to 64. Anything over 10% is unheard of and catastrophic, and it's yeah. 40%. So there, this is these are humans. These are humans, and luckily all of us on this call, we know that life is immortal, that we'll recycle, uh, that actually you don't need to be afraid of death. And it's the only way really that we can look at all the morticians talking about the fact that they're pulling these clots. Out. They can't even embalm anyone anymore. You can't get the blood in because of all the clots that they're pulling out of people. Um, it's, 
It is so horrific. But as you know, your ability to feel joy and light is equal to your ability to feel the depth, the depth of your pain. And so we're, we're kind of using that as a trampoline to shoot up into this time of joy and transformation. And, uh, you know, we're going to see everything that's wonderful, regenerative agriculture, regenerative relationships, regenerative, regenerative homes. Who wants a big McMansion? Who wants, you know, the most exquisite designer wardrobe to go where? Exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is boring to me anyway. Like, I prefer talking about this kind of stuff, the metaphysical, the, you know, and Catherine and I have talked about that too, about looking towards the future. And I love that when all heaven breaks loose instead of when all hell, I, I'm going to have to start saying that because I do, I do from what I've divined and in my own intuition and prayer and meditation, I do feel like we're very close. Mm. We're very close to that cl- cataclysm that has to happen. Yeah. Um, that has to happen. And I was with a friend who was channeling one day and she um she channeled through this entity that said that the flood story was the drowning of atlantis which started this timeline and what's going to happen is going to be another flood but it's not going to be water it's going to be vibration there's going to be like a breakthrough of vibration and it's going to our colors are going to seem brighter and um and that and i do believe there will be people exiting that aren't ready for that yeah that's okay they're that's their sole contract they they're not ready but for those who are staying around this is why we you know, what's the Hunger Games? I volunteer as tribute. Like, that's why we put our hands up and volunteered as tribute was to come down to this gangster planet <laughs> and right. learn how to be gangsters it's, ourselves. So, and you know, ultimately, because this is about how to find your passion, this is our passion. I read yeah. all of Edgar Casey when I was a teenager. Yeah. I read yeah. all of um, Joan Grant's novels, they were all of her past lives. Yeah. I mean, this has been, uh, you know, winged pharaoh. Like, how did you become a winged pharaoh? They buried you alive for three days. Oh, okay. I mean, that's the stuff I've always been interested in, really. Yeah. And, you know, so I became a doctor. And I think all of that was just so that uh, for the first lifetime, I would have all the credentials. So, you know how people say to you, um, well, are you a doctor? Yes. Not, not, yeah. And by the way, that doesn't matter. Just so you know, because if you're a doctor and I am and all of that stuff, then they'll say, well, you're not a molecular biologist. Well, <laughs> you're not a biologist. So it really doesn't. So I would want everyone to know it doesn't matter. Yeah. And the yeah. data doesn't matter either, by the way. I've got reams of data. And when I do a presentation like I'm going to do Friday, I have references beyond references that are available. It doesn't matter. Mm. Because this has to come from the heart and it has to feel right. Kind of like when I watched Out of Shadows Official and Ball of the Cabal, my heart said, oh, this is That's what's it. going on. That's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, yeah. we'll prove it. And then I'd send this stuff to, you know, my friends who are more left hemisphere and, you know, a lot of education at Harvard. And they'd say, how can a woman of your intelligence believe yes. this stuff? Did you ever get that one? How oh, we- yeah. Tell it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. it's, it's hysterical. And I think the joy to me is is we're, we are so truly coming back. I've seen more people talking about intuition, tuning in, connect with your higher consciousness, connect with your source. I, the, these words where we used to be too wacky woo and people weren't speaking about it, now they are becoming mainstream. And there's so many people that just get that. I think that's really, really positive and lovely to see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it really, really is. And, and life does become more fun. Mm. So, you know, if you do, your, you do your meditation, you do your affirmation, you do, I really like, uh, there's this Christian uh, prophet who, whose work I love, Kat Kerr, and she talks about living uh, heaven culture, heaven culture. And she has this way that she teaches you, which I adore, how to become dangerous to the demonics. And uh, so she says, you know, by the spiritual authority vested in me through my connection with God and Jesus, I now command the heavenly host, and these are the big guys with the weapons, the heavenly host to go out and remove the demonics from, you know, we could say the British crown, Washington, D.C. I start with my own town. And then she said, the more you ask, the more you get. 
So therefore, we could have, you know, billions of these warrior angels going out in front of us, on top of us, down below us, on each side, behind us, all these warrior angels, like the same guys that parted the Red Sea. Because I think we are headed for a Red Sea moment. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Where your back is against the wall. You know how the Bible is a code. It's a yeah. code. And, you know, and so all the Israelites are there by the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army is behind them. And then the Red Sea gets parted. Don't you love those paintings that I'm seeing, you know, where the Red Sea is parted and the trucks are going? Yes. Through? It's so good. That's where we're going. Mm. How amazing is it that, that we're, I know, I mean, I know everybody's tired and we all have battle fatigue, but a year from now, I think looking back at this and realizing what we lived through, that's something to celebrate. Uh, yeah. And I heard someone say something and I don't know who it was, but it would be um, when your grandchildren or great grandchildren are saying to you, where were you? Mm. What were you doing during the great turning of the ages? And then they'll look at us with wonder and say, you were there. You went through that. Yeah, I can feel that one. Someone yeah. said to me once when I was going through like the dark night of the soul, being having a platform on YouTube and getting all, especially in the beginning, I don't get it as much now, the throwback, the hate. The right, abuse. right, right, right. Um, yeah. But somebody said to me once, like, just think about it this way. You have literal proof for future generations that you did something. Mm -hmm. Until they take our next channel down. We've all right. that. <laughs> That's why I've got backups now. You know, well, I've saved all my videos, even if everything goes down. But look what I did. <laughs> exactly. That's True. what I've got. You've got that backup now because we have been forcing one at side to be like, <laughs> oh, so true. I cannot thank you enough for your time tonight. This has just been absolutely amazing. Have you got any sort of parting messages you want for the listeners? I would say the parting message is just remember every day to begin anew. And one of the things that I like to do, it's the most powerful thing ever, is uh, to bring in the violet flame of St. Germain and literally just see myself sitting in the violet flame, having it burn off all of uh, what's no longer needed. And then also, I learned this from uh, Peter Calhoun, a shaman, had been Episcopal priest and a shaman. And uh, he said, just using Archangel Michael's cobalt blue sword of light, you cut the cords to any demonics that are around you. And then, you know, I, I see it as a like a prep and drape thing, like from all my surgeries. And, you know, when you prep and then you drape, well, this way is you cut all the cords and then you just say, if there are any dark or wandering spirits, I now um, command you to leave and I bar you from ever returning and then you just sit in the violet flame. This only takes like, you know, half of a minute and you see it burning things off. And if there's somebody who's bothering you, um, once you banish them and you sit in the violet flame, I can always tell they do one of three things. They run for the hills because they're not having it this time around. They get on their knees in front of the violet flame and they ask for forgiveness or they hop in the flame with you and say, hey, you've got the message. Yay. <laughs> Wow. So, I'm yeah. writing all this down, by the way. I'm writing it all down as well. I'm like, I'm going to have to write it down right now. <laughs> well, so, I'll show you what next time we do it, how to do an imprint removal that um, Peter showed me how to do. And man, is it powerful. It, it, it can get rid of stuff that, you know, you've had going on for years. So amazing. I good. look forward to it. I look okay. forward to it. So good. thank good. you so much. Dr. You're so Sweeney. welcome. And I'll see you next, Catherine, with Janine. I'm very excited to meet Janine. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Bryce. Take care, everyone. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.